Dear students, dear professors, dear president, dear Ahmad Massoud, on behalf of our higher education institution, I would like to extend a warm welcome to you, Mr. Massoud. We are honored to have you visit our school HEP and share your insights with our students in political sciences and international relations. They are young, they are between 18 more or less and 25 years old, and they have chosen to understand the world, its issues and its complexity. We believe that your visit will inspire and motivate them for strive for excellence and make a positive impact in the world. As we know, you are the son of the Commander Massoud. As a reminder for our student, Commander Massoud was a legendary figure in the fight against Soviet occupation in Afghanistan in the 80s, which lasted for 10 years. Commander Massoud organized a resistance force known as the Mujahideen. Mr. Massoud, you are now in Paris for the release of your book, Our Freedom. You aspire to follow in your father's footsteps. The enemy may change, Taliban instead of Red Army, but the fight remains the same. We know that since the fall of Kabul on August 2021, the Taliban have imposed a heavy burden on the population. Afghanistan is living a real nightmare. You aim to embody the struggle against religious extremism and you are the new voice of the Afghan people heard. You are a resistant, a freedom fighter, a symbol of hope, resilience, determination, courage, integrity. You embody the continuation of the fight against obscurantism. May your visit here be a fruitful one, filled with meaningful discussions with our students. Let us see this opportunity to learn from your experiences to strengthen our bonds and to dream of a future where Afghanistan can thrive. We are eager to hear your thoughts and engage in meaningful discussions during your time with us. Your presence with undoubtedly enrich our academic community and contribute to the growth and development of our students. Once again, on behalf of everyone, everyone present here, I extend a warm welcome to you. Thank you for greeting us with your presence. And we look forward to the wisdom and insights you will share with us. I'm sure it will be a memorable and enlightening experience for everybody. Emmanuel, François, Mr. Massoud, the floor is yours. Thank you. Merci, uh, Céline. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and dear students of uh, HIP, La Revue Politique et Parlementaire, which I represent tonight, on behalf of his uh, redactor-in-chief, on Obinidity, which couldn't be with us, unfortunately, is delighted to receive uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ahmad Massoud, uh, who struggle for a better and a free and better Afghanistan today, as his father did in his time. Uh, Ahmad Massoud, uh, you are the heir of a uh, great uh, Panchiri fa political family uh, for uh, people of my generation. I'm not so old, but uh, I say it for my generation. Uh, the figure of your father, Commander uh, Massoud, has left his mark on us as a man of courage and determination in the fight uh, against, firstly, the Soviet army and for a free country. His assassination uh, by uh, Al-Qaeda in September 2001, uh, two days before the attacks on New York, marked the end of the illusion 
of eternal peace in which we, Western citizens, were living at that time. Um, Ahmad Masood, you are 34 years old, if I wait, okay, 35. <laughs> And you are a graduate of uh, King's College London and a former student of the Stander, uh, Sandhurst Military Academy, uh, which trains the elite of the British Army. As Winston Churchill uh, in his time, you are uh, both a politician and a soldier. You have, having, you have founded the National uh, Resistance Front in August 2021. Uh, with other anti-Taliban fighters and a politician of your uh, country and environment. Um, your resistant movement is not only a military organization, even it is also a military organization. It's also, and uh, above all, a political one. A, this you endorsed your father uh, father's idea of uh, Swiss model for uh, internal power relations in Afghanistan. I hope uh, during this, uh, this conference and dialogue you will elaborate on these uh, political and uh, institutional uh, concepts and also, also you will uh, tell us what could be, in your opinion, a real inclusive and efficient Afghan democracy supported by the majority of your fellows. Um, you will enlighten us on what is really happening in the country, which is difficult to know here, uh, starting with uh, your uh, region, the Panjshir Valley and the Panjshir province. And uh, we are partly, particularly keen to know how uh, you see the possibilities for uh, the uh, opponents of the Taliban to turn the situation around. I won't take much, uh, much time. Uh, Ahmad Masood, uh, thank you once again uh, for uh, visiting us and for this ongoing dialogue with everybody. A uh, dialogue that will give us a better understanding of Afghanistan, of the strength of your movement, and of your expectation uh, regarding also the uh, international community. Thank you very much. Now, um, it's my thank you so much for this presentation. It's my pleasure to take the floor, of course, thanking the president and the director of HUIP, um, there was not so much presentation of HIP, but HIP is very interesting because it was created 124 years ago. It's uh, the core, the, uh, uh, where uh, the uh, sociology uh, was uh, taught uh, for the first time. So sociology is a way of thinking out of the box and giving for the professors at that time with a famous first director, uh, Jeanne Veil, uh, then other prominent sociologist, I'm thinking of Emile Durkheim, who was a teacher in this school, a way of thinking by themselves or thinking by oneself. And I think this is the line of direction we want to have. And when with uh, Arnaud Benedetti, with Madame la Directrice of HIP and the President, we discussed about the necessity and the interest of having this discussion. The first thing that struck me is the age, the generation. Well, I have to say, I know Afghanistan for, I've uh, been knowing Afghanistan for a certain number of years. I was the political advisor of the French forces in 2011, and of course, thanking and always thinking of the sacrifice. The 90 French soldiers who died in Afghanistan, the 700 who were wounded, the 3,400 NATO soldiers, and not to forget the hundreds of thousands of Afghan national security forces, among which some of your friends, colleagues from Panjshir always have in mind that we have been de dedicated shoulder to shoulder to fight against obscurity, to reconquer liberty, 
and to reboost uh, the sovereignty or re-establish the sovereignty of a country. This is my first thought. My second thought is saying that you are 34 or less. <laughs> uh, and we have, you have in front of you students who are younger, but who are willing to know how the world is supposed to work and what is not going in the right direction. But they are students. You are students. And then the war, the death of your father, you were 12 when your father was killed in the Pantry Valley the 9th of September 2001, brought you to responsibility, way younger than you would expect. I would also remind everyone here that you were not supposed to go to military school or to go to King's College, but you wanted to study astronomy, you wanted to study uh, so, uh, science, and that you were brought in very uh, early into this tragedy, which is not only 40 years uh, of tragedy, but more or less two or three centuries. Now, my first thought with the, your, your book, and I do have to apologize on behalf of all the students because they were, were, were really eager to uh, um, uh, read and of course have your bo the book dedicated, but uh, we have had a bit of difficulty on that. The first thing that is striking in your book is why you entered in resistance. What is the incarnation of resistance? You are 34, you have a huge responsibility for your people, for the world, to fight not only against the Taliban, but to fight against those who have abducted the liberty of your country. No, my first question, and we have this discussion, that this interaction, we know each other for a, a certain number of years. Ahmad, what is the first motivation of your implication for the liberty of and the sake of your country? That's an easy question. And tell us a bit more about what has been the reality, the very harsh reality since the fall of Kabul, the 15th of August, 2021. Sure. Um, before answering that question, if I may, to, 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 to greet and to, to talk to, to the students. Well, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's an honor uh, to be here. I'd like to thank each one of you and also the uh, amazing staff in here and the president uh, of the HEP for allowing me to be here and for the invitation. Uh, I just came from the assembly. I talked to many um, uh, members of the parliament, I, uh, I was not as nervous as I am actually in here because it brings the memories. Usually I'm on the other side and, and listening, not uh, to sit here and, and talking. And you see that I hear, I feel that actually the teacher is asking me to come and answer some question which I'm not prepared to answer. So that feeling is, 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 is still there. Maybe that is why uh, uh, it is easier to speak in the parliament and the Senate and assembly than, than, than in here. But it's great to be here, and I thank uh, everyone for their kind words. Uh, and no, I do not have any wisdom. I do not have any uh, sort of uh, uh, wisdom or any uh, intellectual to bring here to speak. Uh, I just have uh, some memories and experience to, to, to share with you. Uh, um, and uh, the, the story uh, of me, and this is the story of not just me, but millions of people in Afghanistan. And because uh, I used to sit in those seats and uh, I learned very carefully and I listened very carefully about the things which uh, my teachers, my professors was telling me. And I tried to learn as much as I can to try to practice it in the best way possible and implement it in my life. And I can assure you that a lot of things I learned during my time at university I try to live by it, and the things I do now is what I learned in those seats. So it is very important, in my opinion, to, to, to because you're in, let's take this from a person who is, I, I can't believe I'm actually 34. I still, I feel like I'm your age. Uh, it looks like uh, I'm getting old. But uh, let's not forget that you're in the best age of your life. Just enjoy it and learn. You're not going to get it back. It's the best time of your life. The best school is Best school, well. probably. Yeah, and well, I have to vouch for King's College as well. My, my, but uh, absolutely, it's the best time of your life. Enjoy it and learn because everything you learn today, it's going to impact you in the future. Uh, uh, also regarding the question that you mentioned, what has um, happened? Why the resistance happened? Well, 
In this regard, uh, I could speak of, okay, what happened to me, but if I may, to go a bit deeper, uh, no issue, no social issue, no political issue in a country is that simple to say, okay, there is just one or two factors to it, and if we remove these two factors, that's it, it's done. It's always, always it's very complicated. For example, everything started in Afghanistan uh, during the Cold War. The revolution happened in Iran, and the revolution uh, brought a lot of change in the region, and that change affected my country in a way that had to decide either they are with West or they're with East. They had to make the decision. There was no opportunity after the revolution in Iran uh, to be in the position of neutrality. At that stage, the government of Afghanistan sent many delegations to uh, uh, Washington. Washington refused to even meet them, time after time after time after time. There's always in that area some rivalry and some uh, problems. However, it had never entered into the chaos situation than the mess that we see today. Unfortunately, that silence that the government of Afghanistan at that time faced in Washington resulted in them making a drastic and a very questionable decision to turn to Russia for military support. And that started the whole idea of the Russians and the Russian support and them entering inside Afghanistan and the whole Cold War which impacted <coughs> Afghanistan. Before that, and during the, uh, the fight against the Soviets' invasion in Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan, even now, before that, they were Muslims. But we never had any, any complication or any confrontation between any uh, group of people in Afghanistan based on their religion. So that moderation, we lived with it for hundreds of years and peace and harmony. There were conflicts, but it was not driven by religious factors. So after that, it was an opportunity that for geopolitical reasons and geostrategic games, that extremist version of Islam to be used for the geopolitical games. Well, at the beginning, it worked wonders. It helped to bring the stalemate, and then it helped to defeat the Soviets. Let's not forget that what I'm talking, it is not of the Mujahideen. Alongside Mujahideen, there were many, many other groups which was being created, which was completely left behind with no attention to. Al-Qaeda was one of those groups. After that, when the Soviet was defeated, the world completely ignored Afghanistan the way right, uh, right now. Completely. They didn't care about what's happening. They didn't care how those means or those tools that they created are being used now in the region. So in darkness, the evil regrouped, strengthened themselves, and created Afghanistan a hot spot for terrorism. And that's where Ahmad Shamas will come from, from the time of the fighting against the Soviet and the time fighting against the terrorism. A group which had the extremist of beliefs that they want to transform the whole country into a prison. We fought against the Soviets because they wanted to hold our thoughts, our freedom, and our behavior, and they wanted to put it in change. They were a totalitarian regime. So were the Taliban and the extremism and the terrorism. They wanted to, to keep us captured. So we fought against them. After we tried to talk to them and we realized they are untalkable, unnegotiable. They refused to talk and they want nothing 
but to implement and strengthen their own ideology. Ahmad Shah Massoud entered the resistance, created the resistance with his people and complete uh, silence of the world and started uh, the resistance. One of the things which I, the big, at the beginning I said there are complications, there are very, it's not every uh, social phenomenon or political phenomenon, it's not that easy. One of the things is that, that at that time Ahmad Shah Massoud came to France in 2001, tried to warn the West and to tell them exactly, as an Afghan, like what is happening and what needs to be done. But unfortunately, no one listened to him. And no one listened to the doctrine that he was proposing, the strategy he was proposing. What happened in 2001 happened. The 9-11, despite the warning of Ahmad Shah Massoud, it happened. And we all saw the change in the strategy and policy all of a sudden, the attention of Afghanistan. Afghanistan was in the center of the attention of the world, just like how it is Ukraine, much more than Ukraine. Because I don't believe in the history of mankind we will find any case like Afghanistan that was a platform of uh, interaction between the international community. Russians were involved, Iranians were involved, Chinese were involved, Pakistanis, Indians, America, NATO, everyone was involved uh, at that time. The beginning of the strategy was to some extent acceptable and it was working. And it was to some extent what Ahmad Shah Massoud said, that we are here in Afghanistan fighting not just a phenomenon called Taliban, an Afghan or an internal issue. It's much deeper. It is an internal, uh, international and regional issue. And the solution is the support of the world to support the people of Afghanistan to get rid of it. At the beginning of 2001, after the 9-11, that strategy was being followed for a couple of months up to a year. And it worked wonders. The Taliban was toppled within three weeks. The international community were actually getting along and, and on working uh, based uh, on, on Afghanistan to, to work together. Iranians, Russians play a constructive role alongside Americans to, to, to for reconstruction of Afghanistan and rebuilding it, and so on and so forth. And we had the Bonn Conference, which paved the way for a legitimate process called election and a legitimate government called elected government of Republic of Afghanistan. Everyone was hopeful. Thousands of people from Europe, refugees, they went back to Afghanistan. Millions of Afghans, they went back from Pakistan, Iran to Afghanistan. While it was a rumble, but there was a hope. We're building something. There's a clear idea. There's a clear vision. There's a clear strategy what we want. Let's go that direction. And then, unfortunately, everything changed. When that strategy was changed to the presence of international forces on the ground. Something that one, what my father always refused and was against. Why? Because as I mentioned that there's a lot of complication in that region. As soon as the NATO presence in Afghanistan with troops on the ground, with boots on the ground happened, the whole cooperation and the trajectory of cooperation of regional countries, it changed. Now, Afghanistan was not a platform of cooperation between international community. It was a platform of rivalry. Why? Because many countries, such as Russia, China, Pakistan, Iran, many countries, even publicly said that the presence of NATO in Afghanistan, it's a strategic threat to them. So, they did everything possible to make NATO leave Afghanistan. That means this past 20 years of war. So, ladies and gentlemen, this war that happened in Afghanistan, it was not just war of us against just the Afghan Taliban. It was much more deeper, much more complicated. And came to the point that Americans 
once again ignored the message and the advice and the request of people of Afghanistan and went behind our back, talked to the Taliban, elevated the enemy, elevated the terrorism to the point that it completely destroyed the balance of negotiation. Just the way that Americans could leave Afghanistan without the negotiation, but that negotiation in agreement, it changed the whole landscape of politics in Afghanistan. It elevated the Taliban to the point that they believed, now we have America on our side, we don't need Afghanistan's uh, government and the rest of the society, we are going to take over. And with it, an unconditional withdrawal, which in the agreement, and also in the withdrawal, which was unconditional, you do not hear anything about human right, women's right, and many other things. And as a consequence, we see the fall of Afghanistan and the, the tragedy that you see today. So, I'm sitting in Kabul, it's 15th of August. What to do? And let's not forget, on uh, years before, I was in your place. I lived in Great Britain for almost 10 years. I studied there. My wife is British. I could stay there. By the way, just to, to, to change uh, 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 the atmosphere a bit, I, I didn't go to, uh, like, uh, I went to the other side of the channel, some friends in here in France. They say you went to the wrong side of the challenge and learned English instead of French. I hope for me to learn enough French as well and, and uh, soon, so the next time we interact, I speak French, hopefully. But uh, I could stay. But just like me, there were millions that we never came to Europe in the hope of living. We came in the hope of learning from all of you to return because I truly enjoy seeing in here this beautiful group of young men and women sitting together in here and peace and our harmony learning. This is something that we lack in Afghanistan. Taliban do not allow women to go to school. Note they are allowing them to go to work. So we also wanted to return to gain from the West and go to our country and rebuild our country. But unfortunately, Afghanistan collapsed and I had two options. Either to stand on those principles, which I was, no, I was taught in these chairs, those principles which I was studying in the books, those principles which is shaping my character, or to leave my people or to join the Taliban and forever disgrace my father and what he did and what truly the people of Afghanistan wants. Basically, I had two options. One was a catastrophic war, knowing no one is going to help. And two was a shameful peace that I would lose my principle for myself personally and for my people. There would be no cause left. It would be completely hopeless. And the decision was instant, easy. I'd rather live very short period of time, but to live with dignity in principle and values rather than to live under the tyranny and extremism and oppression long life. So that was the reason and those girls and boys in knowing exactly this history of Afghanistan, the mentality and ideology of the Taliban, which we decided to resist. Because they do not belong to my country, to my religion, and to the ideology of the people of Afghanistan. Sorry it was too long, but I had to say it. It was perfect. Uh, you should have added that your father studied in French because your father was graduated from Lycée yes. Istiklal, the yes. French, yes. le lycée français, hein, le fils, non, le père de Damad, Ahmad Shah Massoud, considéré comme héros national, c'est littéralement son titre désormais depuis 2019, avait la France en très haute estime puisqu'il est euh, bachelier du lycée français, du lycée Istiklal. Avec euh, cette filiation, I will switch back to English uh, because I know you're very fond of the historical link between our countries. Last year, we celebrated 100 years of diplomatic relations, 1922-2022. It was a very sad uh, commemoration because, of course, the situation has worsened. 
I always have in mind when I speak about Afghanistan of this wonderful phrase of General de Gaulle uh, trying to explain to someone why is Afghanistan important to France. And he had this phrase when Zahir Shah, the former king of Afghanistan, went in France in June 1965. L'Afghanistan, ce pays si éloigné par la distance, mais si proche en nos cœurs par l'amour de la culture et l'amour euh, donc de, de cette modernité euh, et, et, et de cette... Euh, de cette attente civilisationnelle partagée à travers ce qui a été la première raison d'être de notre relation diplomatique, les coopérations en matière archéologique. So, you studied in Great Britain, you are expecting a lot from your sustains, the Western sustains and the Occidental support. Uh, by the way, your book has finally arrived a bit late. Is it? It is here. I will show to the audience. So, the book is called Notre Liberté, Our Freedom. It was. It is published in Bouquin, in French. In which other language is it? Uh, it's going to be translated to many other languages: English, Italian, and uh, Arabic, Persian, uh, very soon. But right now, it's only. It's only in French. So it's the first. It's the first. It's the first language that you translated. So. Um, alors on s'excuse de nouveau. Hein. On a eu un petit problème technique, mais je l'assume totalement. En tout cas, vous pourrez le trouver dans toutes les librairies, uh, et je vous conseille vraiment de le lire pour vous inspirer au sens propre de ce qu'a dit Ahmad Massoud, le sens de l'engagement, comment est-ce que vous devez comprendre la manière dont un certain nombre de destinées, de trajectoires, sont obscurcies, mais d'une certaine manière aussi enrichies et, 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 et dopées par les conséquences de l'histoire. You spoke about uh, Great Britain, you spoke about France, you spoke about the West. I have two questions that I want to raise with you. You mentioned the fact that there is a sort of irreconcilable discussion with the Taliban. Nevertheless, you opened all the doors possible since you went in Tehran in January 2022. You met Amir Khan Mutaki, so-called Minister of Foreign Affairs of the so-called Taliban government. Let's put it that way. Um, but the discussion did not follow. And maybe that gives us the opportunity to tell us what is your vision of Afghanistan. That's decentralized states, social justice, women's rights, um, inclusive government. Who should be part of this inclusive government? Could you be part of an inclusive government proposed by the Taliban or maybe a part of a discussion? Tell us what is the core difference between them and you and what is your political motivation for the future of your country? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, now that uh, we know a little bit, of course, it's very, uh, uh, I know, big, and I just mentioned some thoughts about it previous histories and you know, the, the roots of the conflict in Afghanistan uh, and the region. Uh, now, what can be the solution? Well, it's a million dollar question, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not that easy to say, okay, that's it, that's the fix, that's the, the, the solution. Uh, however, I believe the solution resides in the alternative to the Taliban to current situation. It resides in a process, a process that needs to be followed a process which is based on a, a legitimate demands of the people of Afghanistan, which leads to a government that is, as you mentioned, it is inclusive, it is uh, the, the rights of women have been completely preserved, and also it represents the whole of Afghanistan, and also it has uh, learned from the past to be a government to truly uh, make the situation in a way that we can live in peace and harmony with each other and with the world. Uh, so we believe, in my opinion, when uh, uh, I made that decision to resist, of course, before that, time after time we tried to uh, basically do our job and talk to the Taliban and try first all the political approaches. I have exhausted all of the political approaches first when there was no choice we had to decide for the armed resistance. The Taliban did not leave us any other choice but to resist. Uh, this is why uh, the doors for negotiation talk is very much always open. Because in negotiation and talk and dialogue, the evil always lose. All the time. Always. So because of this, uh, we think, uh, and this is my opinion, 
although that the Taliban offered me to be uh, in their cabinet, they said, come and be our minister. I said, that is not the solution. The solution is not for Ahmed and Mahmoud to come and join your government. The solution is, what is the vision for future Afghanistan? How we can build the path toward that? The solution is how the people can be engaged uh, in a way so they can decide the future, not just Ahmed Masood, I am nobody. So we believe that the solution to the current situation, first and foremost, the Afghanistan needs a political process that all groups from different backgrounds and diaspora to get together and they talk, including those reconcilable uh, Taliban section as well even, to talk about, okay, we agree on few steps. For example, first, we agree on a conference, international conference on Afghanistan, how it was in Bonn conference in 2001. And from there, reform in the constitution, and then an election, and then a legitimate government. The process that the people are willing. And if the people of Afghanistan, through a democratic way, they decide for Taliban to be in power, who am I to oppose? But no, the Taliban are saying, it's either my way or no way. I came here through my power, through my gun, you gotta accept me, that's all. And that's something which is the main difference between us and them, that that is not going to work. Our fight and the struggle, it is for the people. <coughs> and they need to have a say in this. And democracy is too dear to allow authoritarianism and totalitarianism to take it from us, especially after so many uh, uh, sacrifices we made. So I talked to the Taliban in Tehran. I talked to the Taliban in, in, in Afghanistan. Unfortunately, I believe now it is very clear to all of us, despite many trying to whitewash them because of their own geopolitical games, I believe that now we can agree they have not changed. So, to make them change, this was one of the strategy of my father. We need to bring pressure to make them change. Now, some people, they say, okay, we used, we fought for 20 years. They kept fighting, they didn't change. This is where they are wrong, my friends. First and foremost, I explained earlier that one of the reasons for the ongoing war was the rivalry between the regional powers and the NATO, which they didn't want this war to end until the NATO leaves. So that's why they were not like you know, letting this war go. They were keep pushing for the Taliban to keep fighting and fighting. Because in 1999, when my father was fighting against the Taliban all alone, the Taliban, after realizing that the military defeat of Ahmad Shah Massoud is impossible, they agreed to talk. And we reached an agreement in Turkmenistan under the uh, UN watch. But unfortunately, as soon as their leadership returned to Pakistan at that time, the Pakistan decision was the continuation of war, and they uh, did not follow their uh, own agreement with us. However, it proved that the Taliban are very much, if they are under the pressure and knowing that their military dominance has been challenged and not working, they are ready to talk. If there is no pressure, they are not willing to compromise. So one of the main elements of our strategy, it is to strengthen the resistance of the women of Afghanistan and the men of Afghanistan in any way, shape, and form with the help of international community to bring enough pressure to bring Taliban to the table to talk. Because what I learned in your chairs, that as a humankind, we reach to the point that we need to solve our issues through talk, through dialogue, through uh, negotiation, not through conflict. The peace is too dear. This <laughs> earth that we have is too dear. And our life is too precious to spend it on, 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 on endless wars, on, on, on useless wars. Because take it from me, who has lost, as uh, my colleagues in here said, 
a lot. I lost my father. I lost my best friends. I lost my uncles. I lost my cousins in this war. So take it from me that this useless war are, are really uh, uh, useless and we need peace. However, to reach peace, sometimes you have to fight for it. Right now, some real politic games that you see, the result is the regression of the democracy and the aggression of totalitarianism and the retreat of democracy. And democracy, take it from me, it is too dear. Don't take it for granted. Sometimes it can go away in a blink of eye. Just look at Afghanistan. The next day, girls woke up and realized they cannot go to school. Only, thank you. Uh, just one question. Uh, you speak about the pressure uh, international, and uh, one of the key factors of uh, pressure is the international landscape. Uh, currently, uh, what we know, about, at least what we know of the situation, is that uh, the Taliban regime is backed by uh, Moscow and is backed by the Chinese. After the sad evacuation of uh, uh, Kabul and uh, Bagram by the, by the Americans, uh, here in the Western country, nobody wants to talk about any kind of new involvement in, uh, on the ground in Afghanistan. So, um, what kind of tools, uh, international tools, allies, uh, resources, you can mobilize uh, in order to 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 was to make this uh, uh, this pressure uh, uh, you speak about uh, this pressure uh, harder and more efficient uh, today. Sure. Uh, well, it just shows the unity among those uh, countries like China, Russia, and uh, it, ju it just shows. Uh, and uh, that's uh, the fact that you said there is no um, sort of uh, um, interest in the West for any involvement. It just shows that, unfortunately, real politic has uh, has uh, overtaken the, you know, the the way of principles. Let me start with the way that, uh, if you remember, during World War II, uh, before uh, before it, when the, the attack on Poland happened, Chamberlain. Uh, uh, back in the days, the Prime Minister of the UK, he actually had this idea of engaging with Nazis. And uh, engaging with Nazis, working with them, and having like them to promise that, okay, you're not invading here, you're not invading here, we are working together. But then came someone who changed the whole landscape, and that was Winston Churchill, a man of principle. He said, I know this evil, Although that they were very much, you all know that the Nazis, they were to some extent very much fond of UK. They were very much fond of the Britain that they wanted to have a good you know, relationship with one. But Winston Churchill, uh, completely uh, different than uh, Chamberlain, decided to stand on the principles and call the lies and call the, uh, the, the sort of the deceive of the Nazis. And stood and managed with the help and the support of, of course, the United States and, 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 and many uh, to be able to finally, like, you know, uh, with the help of the resistance of France, which is very important, uh, to liberate once again the Europe and bring that uh, many decades of democracy. I believe one thing is that uh, those principles that those countries have, such as China, uh, uh, at least they're sticking to those principles. And are I, at least those, those principles are inhuman, those principles are very uh, restrict, those principles are not democratic, but they're standing on those principles. Well, it is just shows that unfortunately we are not standing on those values that we preach. So in this regard, I believe it is very important to stick together the democracies and to help the global democracy, resistance for democracy first and foremost, and secondly, there are ways, rather than just the military intervention, to support the people of Afghanistan. Unfortunately, let me tell you that there is no proper sanction regime on Taliban as of now. There is no uh, proper uh, uh, sort of a sanction on the, the, uh, of travel on the Taliban. And uh, the engagement has only elevated them so far. 
And it all uh, created a situation that the Taliban are thinking that in this situation that some areas are supporting us, some area completely ignoring or uh, engaging with us in a different way. So we are the only reality. So they have no choice but to deal with us. So I believe the political engagement with the resistance of people of Afghanistan, with the opposition of the Taliban, recognition of that, and also recognition of the gender apartheid happening right now in Afghanistan, all of these are huge blows to the, to the image of the Taliban in huge moral to the people of Afghanistan to uprise against this evil. Some people, they say, then why people of Afghanistan are not protesting, uprising? Well, think for one second that the General de Gaulle and the resistance of France did not have the support of allies and the support of uh, UK and so on and so forth. Would the resistance of France succeed? Would the Europe actually be free of Nazism and, and fascism? I don't think so. So therefore, also the people of Afghanistan now, they truly need help because we are not facing only Taliban, but it is international terrorism alongside the international narco trade, alongside with their bodies. So before giving the floor to the, to the, to the students, because I know there's a lot of questions, we must nevertheless not forget that the front is still united. No country has still recognized the Taliban except China, which is opening an embassy, which, which allowed the Taliban to open an embassy in Beijing. There are some talks of opening an embassy in Moscow. There was a delegation in Kazan a few days ago. But on our side, the so-called West, uh, so-called United West, there's no such will to recognize the Taliban. Yeah. That's the first thing. The second thing, which is very important, is that there is the Afghan people, and that we must be aware that they are living a uh, nightmare. 65% of the population is under the auspices of what the World um, uh, Food uh, 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 Program calls crise humanitaire aiguë, stade 2, stade 3. 24 million of Afghans are striving, and so they need to be helped. In a country where 75% of the budget came from the West, where 40% of the budget came from aid. So there's so, sort of a um, very complex decision to make. Either we abandon Afghanistan because we do not want to liaise with the Taliban, either we must, in a way, still maintain a link with some type of organization to bring in food, to bring in health, to bring in care because the winter is coming and will be striking the Afghans. So I just wanted to pinpoint this because this is a very difficult um, situation uh, to tackle that each of our government is expecting. Um, just one last question, very rapidly, and then we, we shift to, to the floor. Uh, we mentioned the West. We, my colleague mentioned China. Can you tell us a bit more what is the role that you're expecting from the neighboring countries? Because I do fear and I do feel that they are the key to the solution. Yes. Uzbeks, Tajik, Iranians, Pakistan. Turkmenistan, and Iran. Very, sure. it, and India, not yeah. forget India. Right. Sure, well, um, I don't believe that there is a solution to the issues of Afghanistan without uh, proper engagement of international community with the regional countries, including our neighbors. Because as I mentioned, the issues of Afghanistan are rooted and the rivalry of the region and international powers. So this is why it is very important to engage with them for a proper constructive way uh, to, 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 to solve the issues of Afghanistan. And I believe there is an opportunity. Unfortunately, the situation in Ukraine is bringing a lot of tension. However, there is an opportunity because we are to similar uh, way because of the, uh, not the absence of NATO in Afghanistan, now they can play a constructive role because they are seeing the impact of the continuation of the current situation. For example, in Iran, there are six million refugees in Iran, Afghan refugees. There are many, many attacks in Pakistan on a daily basis. So they're already feeling the impact of the continuation of the current situation. So. I believe they also want political stability in Afghanistan, but they cannot do it alone. They need international support as well. Thank you, Ahmad, for this uh, very pragmatic and very direct question. So now we're going to open the floor. 
I'm handing the microphone to Farida. Who wants to say a word, ask a question, address Ahmad? Do feel free. Si vous ne voulez pas le faire en anglais, je peux traduire. Je vous offre cette, je vous offre cette, perce, cette possibilité pour qu'il n'y ait pas de questions. I remember, Please. I, I, we didn't want to ask questions. We just wanted the, the lectures one, to the end and to the go. The first one is always the most difficult. But then it goes on very rapidly. Allez-y, je vous en prie. En français ou en anglais, du coup Comme vous préférez. OK. Là où vous euh, vous sentez le plus à l'aise. Déjà, on est très heureux de vous avoir ici. Euh, J'ai lu un, de vos, un article sur vous. Et je voulais savoir, est-ce que vous pensez que les talibans sont qu'une menace pour l'Afghanistan ou aussi une menace pour l'Europe, in fine Vous pensez qu'ils vont, ils vont se restreindre sur leur, leur zone ou est-ce qu'ils peuvent venir jusqu'ici et préparer quelque chose Merci beaucoup. Merci pour votre question. Thank you very much. It is currently it's a threat for only Afghanistan and the neighboring countries, but it is uh, regrouping. It is creating Afghanistan a complete safe haven for the terrorism, a breeding ground for terrorism, and it is empowering ter terrorism elsewhere. And it is uh, it's not about uh, when, it's not about if, it's not uh, it's uh, the question of when uh, for it to reach to Europe. Because I'm sure you know that, uh, for example, and, 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 and Pakistan, the TTP got their name and their motivation and their role model from the Afghan Taliban. It's called Tahrik Taliban Pakistan. Or Boko Haram, as a matter of fact, in Africa, you all know that Boko Haram called themselves the Taliban of Africa. So it is already having that impact on the other terrorist groups. And it is, it, it is it's, it's devastating if they keep continuing this way because they will provide the situation of Afghanistan for, for the terrorism to grow and go beyond. Thank you. Y a-t-il d'autres questions J'arrive pas à voir, je vais me lever pour voir. Alors, il y a monsieur. Et, alors, d'abord madame, mademoiselle, pardon. Et ensuite, on prendra monsieur. Euh, bon, je vais la poser en français. Euh, D'après ce que j'ai compris, votre père. Micro devant votre voilà. euh, D'après ce que j'ai compris, votre père a été assassiné par Al Qaïda quand vous avez dou... quand vous aviez eu 12 ans. Et euh, j'imagine que vous avez dû ressentir des émotions fortes quand ça a dû arriver. Et est-ce que vous avez ressenti de la haine Et si c'est le cas, comment avez-vous fait pour euh, surpasser cette haine pour venir pour en venir euh, à trouver des solutions euh, pacifiques et, diplom et euh, diplomatiques dans la négociation C'est une très bonne question, mademoiselle. Oui, malheureusement, j'ai été malheureux de pouvoir voir le corps de mon père Uh, after the explosion and uh, still it is in my head it is a trauma it is a constant pain because uh, i don't know if you've seen i know his photo he was a remarkable beautiful handsome of a man and uh, um, but he was he the explosion uh, truly uh, impacted him and that is still uh, stay with me and of course that makes every man and every girl and every boy and every children angry and I was angry. Well, the solution, uh, uh, Madam, uh, well, I found it through Rumi. I don't know if you know Rumi, a Persian uh, poet. Uh, his uh, complete name is uh, Jalaluddin Muhammad Balghi. He's from Afghanistan. And uh, Rumi has a beautiful poem that after years uh, passed by, I was always angry. I was fighting with my mother, with my sisters. I was angry at myself, I was angry at my dad, that why, had you, uh, why you had to just do politics, so, because it was so painful era for, uh, for me and my family. And then I read a poem from Rumi, which just, it was like a water washing uh, the dirt. It washed away all my, my pain, it washed away all my suffering and all my anger. Uh, well, I, I don't want to take too much of time, but basically the first uh, verse is like this. Um, بروز مرگ چو تابوت من روان باشد گمان مبر که مرا درد این جهان باشد برای من مگیری و مگو دریغ دریغ بدام دیو درفتی دریغ آن باشد Basically it says the day that you are taking my coffins and taking it to the, to the uh, graveyard do not weep for me and do not be sad for me 
Because if I have lived a life that I've turned into an evil person, and that is the time that you have to be upset. So it starts like that, and uh, it's, it's a great poem. And that was the source, actually, for, for me, that all of that anger and the hatred and uh, the feeling that I had, it was washed away with just that poem, Rumi. Vous pensez quoi de l'action américaine en Afghanistan Vous pensez quoi de l'action américaine en Afghanistan, de, de la période soviétique, de la période de l'invasion soviétique jusqu'à maintenant, jusqu'au retrait des troupes Yeah, well, uh, let's not forget that uh, America did a lot of good things in Afghanistan. They provided support, they provided a lot of things, and they sacrificed a lot. And there were soldiers and there were personnel who gave their life because of the people of Afghanistan, and they entered. And just the way that I heard from some of them that they said, we, didn't, we did not lose to the Taliban and to the war. We lost our own politicians. Uh, uh, so uh, that basically kind of wraps it up that unfortunately sometimes someone who's sitting far away behind a desk uh, he doesn't know the power of his stroke of his pen that the impact it has on, 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 and on millions and millions and millions so unfortunately uh, uh, their intervention could be uh, one of the greatest achievements uh, that the West could have but unfortunately with bad policies with complete wrong military doctrine and uh, with a disastrous end, uh, it turned into nothing but a sour experience. Merci à la direction d'HEP parce que je vois que les livres circulent, donc on a trouvé une solution. Donc pour les étudiants qui voudront. Euh acquérir du, de l'ouvrage, ou en tout cas avoir le plaisir et, et, et l'honneur d'une dédicace d'Amad Massoud, ce sera tout à fait possible avant qu'il s'en aille, et on le remercie de sa présence. Allez-y, monsieur. Thank you so much for your conference. Um, I was wondering, so, uh, in the continuation of the previous question, do you believe... Rapprochez votre micro. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you believe that nowadays, um, I guess the situation isn't... Uh, Turn, uh, leaning towards that, but if it were to happen, that another intervention uh, led in by the, the international community, by the West, maybe by the NATO, could be a possible solution. How would it, how do you believe it could be done uh, if it were uh, a way to solve uh, the conflict? Thank you. No, I don't think that uh, military intervention in Afghanistan is a solution. If it was a solution, it would be in the past 20 years. So. No, uh, we have enough manpower and Afghans have enough courage to fight their own war, but they need support. They need support from outside. And uh, you would see that uh, uh, even in, in the case of Ukraine, if there was any direct uh, military uh, intervention or the prisons, uh, it would make it very ugly. So therefore, uh, the people of Afghanistan are very much ready to fight for their own uh, sort of uh, on their own but they need international support. A military intervention, it is not a good idea. It will not work. It is uh, already a failed policy, but uh, the support of the people of Afghanistan, supporting the democratic forces of Afghanistan, and uh, engaging with the regional uh, countries to end the conflict, it is the solution going forward. On va profiter d'être dans le fond. Je vois qu'il y a deux mains qui se lèvent, monsieur. Et puis, voilà. Et puis ensuite, on va passer le micro ensuite devant. Alors, allez-y, monsieur. Uh, I would like to know uh, what is the attitude... Uh... Parlez juste un petit peu plus fort. Voilà. I would like to know what is the attitude of the Muslim country regarding the Taliban regime. Uh, what is your point of view about... Uh... Uh, the, the attitude of Muslim countries. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the Muslim countries so far, they also did not recognize the Taliban. They have sent many delegations to change the opinion of Taliban on the women's right, on the women's education, but the Taliban denied all of them. 
And uh, some of these Muslim countries, such as Iran and Pakistan, are already suffering because of the, and, uh, the, 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 the Taliban's impact, immediate impact with immigration and also with, uh, with the increase on the, uh, on the terrorist attacks. And uh, uh, the rest of the Muslim countries, actually, they have their own problem. Uh, that, uh, that is of uh, another debate and, and, and maybe lecture. Alors, allez-y, monsieur, et ensuite on va repasser de ce côté-ci de l'amphithéâtre. Salam. Man khili khoshar ke shoma asti insin. I just have a question. I just was uh, saying that I'm very happy that he is here. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. I just have a question. Uh, I just wanted to ask how can we really, as a student, uh, support and help the Afghan people and the women and the kids in Afghanistan. Wow, Thank you. wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much, that's, uh, that's amazing. Well, um, <clears throat> uh, it can happen in any way possible. From uh, uh, learning about Afghanistan, to bringing awareness to, to the, to the, uh, to the uh, people in France, and uh, to uh, universities among the students, and also to put pressure on the politicians uh, to make some you know, real actions. And also, uh, uh, I believe it is uh, uh, with interaction uh, with, with uh, uh, the women of Afghanistan, especially the women entities in Afghanistan, and, uh, that uh, they have the representative across Europe and the resistant representative across Europe to help you know, people of Afghanistan. The means of and the ways to help people of Afghanistan are, are, are Or, or, or many, many ways. Je, je rappelle hein, que vous avez un privilège de pouvoir étudier, mais ce n'est pas le cas en Afghanistan, puisque depuis mars dernier, les jeunes filles n'ont plus le droit d'aller à l'université. Voilà, je le mets en contexte. Euh, je ne sais plus où est le micro. Alors attendez, je vois. Ah, Bonjour, euh, j'avais une question à propos du mouvement national Pashtun. Quand on voit aujourd'hui que beaucoup d'empires. Euh, sont morts en Afghanistan, que ce soit les soviétiques, euh, les américains ou le Pakistan aujourd'hui, à travers les talibans. Comment vous pensez euh, qu'on puisse enfin sécuriser l'Afghanistan et empêcher toute euh, intervention étrangère et que enfin l'Afghanistan puisse avoir sa souveraineté Merci. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, how to prevent any foreign intervention and build a like, you know, sovereignty for Afghanistan? I believe it is by defining the rule of the region and international community and how can they play a constructive role and engaging with each other and engaging with the people of Afghanistan in uh, uh, and, and a, and a proper framework. That, I believe, it, it is the solution. Uh, And uh, otherwise, uh, those uh, intervention, it is already happening. Maybe it is not happening in, in, in the scale that we, we were used to before, but it is happening in a different ways. Uh, right now, there are some groups in Afghanistan which are proxies, which are uh, international terrorist groups right now in Afghanistan. Unfortunately, because of, because of the international rivalry and superpowers rivalry, The Islamic extremism is a very good tool for geopolitical and geostrategic games. Certains diraient qu'il y a déjà une intervention avec le rôle du Pakistan hein, en Afghanistan, mais je crois que c'était le sens de votre question. Alors je sais que mon collègue Fouad Noura voulait prendre la parole, mais... Ah, bah non. Ah bah non, non, mais... Ah, non, mais... Le privilège revient aux étudiants, Fouad, à tes étudiants. Monsieur, et ensuite on donnera la parole à Fouad. Bonjour. Euh, déjà, j'aimerais savoir comment vous, vous allez. Euh, C'est important et je vous remercie de, je vous remercie de venir. Euh, ma question, elle est très claire. L'Afghanistan est un pays, euh, on le sait, il y a plusieurs groupes, il y a plusieurs communautés, les Hazaras, les Pashtuns, vous savez mieux que moi certainement. Quel serait selon vous le projet le plus viable pour faire de l'Afghanistan un pays homogène dans, le, dans la durée, sur le temps long, et éviter que ce pays soit friable comme il l'est depuis, vous l'avez rappelé, l'invasion soviétique en 1979. Et enfin, j'aimerais faire un parallèle personnel. Je suis d'origine arménienne et, 
J'imagine, j'espère que vous suivez l'actualité en Arménie. Et je voulais vous dire que je comprends la situation de votre pays au travers de la situation de mon pays. Et je vous souhaite le meilleur pour le futur. Merci. Toutes nos pensées à la population arménienne. Toutes nos pensées à la population arménienne qui a dû fuir le Karabakh. Donc les 93 000 Arméniens qui ont dû fuir en quelques jours l'enclave hein, du euh, Haut-Karabakh, appelée euh, République d'Arta, qui n'existe désormais plus. Notre pensée va vers euh, vos euh, concitoyens. Please. OK. Um, uh, first and foremost, it's been so long that no one actually has how you do. And so thank you very much. You're, uh, you're the first after so many, so many uh, days and weeks, actually. And I'm good. Thank you very much. And being here, it just uh, uh, brought so many good and sweet memories of my past, which I miss a lot and miss dearly. Uh, regarding uh, uh, the integration, which I strongly believe that as a, as a mankind, uh, we need to move toward integration, not segregation. And... Uh, Uh, these ideas of uh, segregation, these idea of like you know um, keeping different sort of groups completely separated from each other, and I strongly uh, I'm opposed it and I'm against it. Uh, <clears throat> regarding Afghanistan, Afghanistan is a multicultural state. The best experience which I need to pass on to you as well, but a very small experience that I have is that. A lot of things that we read you know, from uh, the lines of the book, sometimes on the ground it is different. Things you learn with experience, you cannot learn it anywhere else or by any other means. So experience is very important. An experience uh, of a country like Afghanistan, a multicultural state, it just showed that in that state, usually, Uh, and actually mostly a very centralized government does not work. Because what it does, it creates an atmosphere and situation like Afghanistan that all ethnicities, to save themselves, they are in a race against each other to get that small opportunity of power. Right? So what in Afghanistan did, Afghanistan, unfortunately, And uh, one of the big mistakes of the past 20 years was creating a highly centralized government. That Pashtun, Uzbek, Hazaras, these different ethnicities, they were rushing to get to the power. Because of this, because of this worry, because of these sort of the concerns that if I'm not there, if I'm not represented there, then the opposition might eliminate me. So therefore, In such countries with such uh, uh, sorts of uh, groups and different ethnicities in groups and tribes, the best possible solution, political solution in such country, it is decentralization. It worked. From America that we see, right, to Suisse and uh, uh, to many other countries around the globe, that a decentralized system is truly uh, the solution. And of course, there is always that touch of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the identity of that country. In it. And they have always the, their own touch into, into that model of the decentralization. Uh, however, it's always the key. And I strongly believe, actually, I wrote an article in uh, New York Times that you can, that you can find. It. It's, it's called, What is Missing uh, from Afghan Peace Deal? And, uh, and that I uh, went into detail why Afghanistan needs decentralization and why uh, any other type of uh, government in Afghanistan does not work. Because I went through, you know, throughout uh, uh, my time in London when I was studying, I researched in depth about the past history of Afghanistan. I went to the government, to the governments, factors to factors, elements to elements, that why we are in constant war and constant problem. And sometimes there are factors which is very you know, concrete, but they are all created because of one big mother of all problems, father of all problems. And that is the centralized uh, political system in Afghanistan, which created the situation in a way that everyone is rushing to fight for. Fred. Okay, 
Thank you. Um, I just first. Um, w w I'm, I'm really very happy that you are here, that you are participating. You are presenting the, 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 the issue now of, of the Afghanistani strike against uh, the Taliban. Uh, I'm presenting myself. I'm Fouad Nora, the academic director of SETS, Sound uh, Diplomatic Strategic. I'm working under the uh, leadership and the direction of Céline Clavry, who uh, is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I really, really appreciate a lot, and uh, um, I'm just. Uh, I want just to, to, to make just some very few remarks. I'm optimistic for Afghanistan now because I think that all the countries who did uh, uh, support uh, at Taliban because it was a default support against the United States presence, etc. Even the Iranian, uh, despite, despite the fact that the, the, the Taliban did, did exterminate the Shia uh, at this time. So uh, know that the American have gone. Despite they have spent one trillion dollars uh, supporting a 300,000 soldiers army, who was totally defeated, and uh, did uh, maybe was supported by a huge coalition of more than 40 countries. But despite all that, they failed. Know that they have gone. There will be an alliance against the Taliban again because even the Pakistani are fearing the expansion of the Taliban in the Pashtunistan, in the Pashtun era, area, um, area, area, and they, they are afraid about it because there, there are movements that are really extremist, destabilizing the country. The Iranian are feeding, the, the Russian are feeding the extremists. And all these people around will maybe switch the balance of force. Nevertheless, we can feel China and the transformation of the Taliban regime into a statistic regime that doesn't harm anybody outside, yeah. but just keeps despotism inside. This Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Alors, d'autres questions des jeunes filles, voilà. J'en vois deux. Euh, D'abord, mademoiselle là, et puis dans le fond. Levez-vous euh, pour qu'on puisse... Oui, pardon. Bonjour. Euh, Bonjour. Il y a deux jeunes, filles, deux jeunes femmes qui sont arrivées en France il y a quelques mois, qui ont fui l'Afghanistan pour pouvoir étudier. Est-ce que vous pensez que ce serait peut-être une solution pérenne, d'ici 5-10 ans, en fait, de mettre en place une, une vraie aide envers les jeunes qui veulent fuir l'Afghanistan pour étudier en France ou en Europe Et peut-être ça impliquerait donc une pression sur les talibans pour leur montrer que l'Europe ne lâchera jamais l'Afghanistan et qu'on aidera notamment les jeunes femmes à continuer à étudier et leur montrer qu'elles sont tout aussi capables que les Afghans. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm in no position to, to decide for that woman or that boy who is suffering under the rule of the Taliban uh, to, to say it, for him to stay or, or, or to leave. Because you should like, you know, feel them that if they are leaving their hometown, if they are leaving their land, if they are leaving their family, it is out of total desperation. Absolute desperation that, uh, desperation that they have no choice. So in this regard, I, I thank all of the Europe and I thank France and I thank all of you for having an open arms to the people of Afghanistan. And I, 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 I'm really grateful and I encourage all of you to be as kind and as nice to my country, men and women, because we always had the best people in the world and we had the worst politicians, unfortunately, resulted in this situation. So uh, I'm really grateful for this kindness and if you guys do anything to help even one girl, please do. However, this is something on the decision makers and the policy makers, which I hope that uh, all of us together we can put enough pressure helping the refugees to resettle in here or helping those who are leaving Afghanistan or sending humanitarian support, these are very good gestures, but not a long-term solution. How many more millions can Iran or Pakistan or Europe can have from Afghanistan? We are 43 million people. How many more millions that the world can send to Afghanistan as, as aid? While Afghanistan is sitting on wealth, enormous wealth, which China is, by the way, is keep locked on, on the wealth of Afghanistan. Why? So this is the thing that I say that these tactical, short-term 
great gestures are very much welcome and should be done. But at the same time, sim uh, simultaneously, we need to work on a proper long-term strategic plan. How can we, we help to, how can the world can help us in Afghanistan to transform our country from what it is today to a country stable? So we do not have more uh, uh, refugees. We do not have, we need the aid. Look at Rwanda. In the case of Rwanda, for example. So it is very important to, to, to really make the stand and have the, this is also something that I have been calling. I appreciate all the effort. I, I, I'm not speaking against it, but it is short term. It's not long term. Take into consideration in the 90s when my father was fighting against the Taliban, the biggest immigration in Afghanistan, it was internally. Because we had geography that the girls could go to school, the women could work, and there were freedom, and they were like you know, a very uh, safe and uh, open uh, sort of society. That the people from different areas under the territory of the Taliban, they came to his territory. So one of the goals that we are having is that to create that. And if it happens, I, and I promise that Millions of those who are in Iran and elsewhere, they want to return because they love their country just the way that I did. I love my country. I want to build it. I'm, if I may, there was a second question is, how do you put pressure on the Taliban? How do you put sanctions on the Taliban? Do you think it's time to put sanctions on the Taliban? Absolutely. Absolutely. What, uh, what the sanction on the Taliban will do that it will, uh, uh, but knowing exactly the ways that they are receiving the support, the means that they are receiving support, the way that they are doing different means of pressure on the Taliban, it will truly you know, cripple them to the point that the people will uprise against them and the resistance will succeed against them. That the Taliban will have no choice but two options. Either they will be destroyed or they will talk and be a part of Afghanistan's future. And they change. So the means of uh, uh, pressure is political. It is those diplomatic pressure. It is uh, 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 through the engagement of the region and, and, uh, and with neighbors. And to help uh, the women and the men of Afghanistan who are resisting against the Taliban. Let's not forget that sometimes uh, you need to defeat the evil uh, by any means possible. No worries. So, first of all, I would like to thank you for taking your time to answer our questions. Such an honor. Uh, as mentioned, you lost your, your dad at, at a very young age, unfortunately. And I would like to know, how did you discover that it was your path to continue this fight? And what advice would you give to international students who come from tribal countries and have the desire to make things change? Thank you very much. Uh, well, first and foremost, if you stuck to a grief, if you stuck to a memory, uh, we will never grow, we will never evolve, we will never achieve. So the most important thing is that not to stuck to a tragedy, to a grief, to learn from it and to keep it in our memory as a reminder of a hardship, but not to stuck to it, not to get depressed, or not to say that the life is over. That's very important. I have lost so many that if uh, uh, I had every reason to be depressed and everything. But I found joy in doing the right thing and following my heart and following my father's step and helping people. That truly really brought joy to me. Regarding international students, I was international students for almost 10 years and I learned a lot. Uh, the West is very... It's very beautiful. It's a country, it's a, it's a, it's a civilization, and the West is very, how to say, attractive. That you would love to stay, that you would love to have a job, that you would love to have a family, that you would love to have your sort of very fixed and uh, planned life. But the thing is that uh, it's good. It's, uh, whoever does it, I always encourage. I, I always like, you know, I, I'm not here to judge. But for me, in my case, I was that, to make my country like this too. I want my my country's women to be able to sit next to their brothers and 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 study. 
I want them to learn science because, by the way, I'm in love with astronomy. I was about to go to astronomy, but I had to change my uh, uh, my profession to 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 to, to stick to on this plan. <laughs> Otherwise, my uh, astronomy was my passion. Still, it is. I love science, and I, I I'm always uh, trying to learn whenever I have time. So um, I gave up to that hope, to that dream, because I really wanted to see hundreds more, thousands more, even millions to reach to, do, to their own goals. Finally, we need to make, as an international student in our country, which we are coming from troubled country, let's say, we need to make a sacrifice. Because we learn something, we need to transfer it, and we need to build. And there are many countries who did it. Japan, for example, Japan and many, uh, Japan and many other uh, East uh, Asian countries, they did it. They learned, they studied, and they, they, uh, they, they took it back, and they built a country which now every one of us, we would love to go and visit and, and see. Alors, tout d'abord, merci beaucoup, c'est un honneur encore une fois. Euh, J'ai suivi une de vos interviews euh, dans Libération où vous dites que le problème est que personne ne nous aide face aux talibans. Et du coup, j'aimerais savoir qu'est-ce que vous attendez exactement militairement, financièrement et euh, diplomatiquement euh, de la part de la communauté internationale And if I may, and if I may add to the question of the lady, uh, what are you expecting uh, concretely, and particularly from the French government, because you are here for uh, a few days, and uh, what comes France, and what can European Union do uh, in order to help uh, your? Uh, sure. Well, uh, first and foremost, any type of support at this critical and hard time that the people of Afghanistan are at is welcome. So I never rule out any help. However, because I'm also um, the student of politics and I know how uh, countries' position are, so I'm never asking for any irrational thing, but there are things that they can do, but still there is no clear policy first. I believe it is time for the West and for international community to recognize that gender apartheid. What else Taliban can do to show that they hate women? That they think of women only as objects, only as pleasure? Fine. What else they should do? They are preventing them from going to school, go to work, go outside without a male guardian, go to park, go outside the country, They are in complete presence, and there is a gender apartheid going on. Let's not forget, actually, uh, uh, their representative in uh, Saudi Arabia. Two days ago, he had a meeting with uh, their counterpart with the uh, Saudi Arabian uh, government, and they had one female in their, in their board. The Taliban in Kabul r realized that they went to a meeting in Saudi Arabia with the, uh, to, to meet Saudis with a woman. They, could, they, they uh, sacked all of them because you took one woman to that board meeting. So you see, recognizing gender apartheid in Afghanistan is one key element to boost the moral energy of the women of Afghanistan and their moral. Second, recognizing the resistance of the women and men of Afghanistan, including uh, 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 the opposition of the Taliban, to recognize them. And third, to uh, give them the uh, sort of a, an, an area or uh, to give them a sort of a, a, a place to work, like, like the Kurds, for example. How the Kurds, they managed when they were able to, to, to have a place, to have an office and stuff like that to, to continue uh, their work. And such thing, it will help a lot uh, the opposition and the women of Afghanistan to continue their fight. And uh, as, 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 uh, as Paris, as, uh, the, as the capital of uh, uh, human right and women's right and capital of democracy. Right? And last thing, it is that political support. To engage with EU, to engage with regional powers, to, to stick to the principles, to say, okay, this is what we believe. And we believe that women of Afghanistan are oppressed. We believe that the government is uh, very much... Uh, uh, their policy is one-sided, and they are very much still uh, in pushing that agenda of extremism. They have not changed. Let's all like you know, work toward 
uh, bringing a legitimate government to Afghanistan and work you know, for a legitimate process. And these are concrete moves that will truly shake uh, the landscape of politics in Afghanistan. Because so far, what the woman, and you put yourself in the woman of Afghanistan, just some condemnation every now and then, and nothing else. You get raped, you get tortured, you get put in jail, you've been filmed, you've been forced to do things which is unimaginable. And on top of that, someone from EU release a statement and say, oh, we condemn it. However, we do not support any resistance in Afghanistan. How do you feel? You feel abandoned. Okay, China and others, they support Taliban, of course, they have that. Who else do you have to support you? You look only to those democratic countries. If they also say these things, then you are like, maybe this is, this is right. All of the world is just about their own national interests, nothing else. Alors, pour compléter, hein, la France fait beaucoup. Hein, on, la France soutient l'idée de la reconnaissance d'un féminicide en Afghanistan et euh, soutient les actions menées par Karim Khan, le procureur de la Cour pénale internationale, pour que l'on puisse utiliser le cas afghan comme un cas d'école, un apartheid fait aux femmes. Voilà quelque chose de concret sur lequel je crois qu'il y a des convergences. Is it too early as well to say that you want to open an office in France Can we speak about that? And what are you expecting with this idea? Well, the thing is, I mean is that to, to give opportunity to the, to the uh, women of Afghanistan, to give opportunity uh, to, to, the, to the opposition of the Taliban, democratic forces and democratic sides of Afghanistan to, to, uh, to elevate themselves. This is what I mean. And this is, I believe, it can be a right gesture uh, to elevate uh, the morale of uh, uh, these groups which feel abandoned. Thank you. Alors, on va peut-être prendre... Je vois que le temps tourne, je tourne vers Féline. On nous... On va encore prendre deux questions, parce que la bonne nouvelle, c'est qu'on a des ouvrages, et que Ahmad, pour quelques-uns, Ahmad va faire quelques dédicaces. He will dedicate some. OK. He has to leave at seven, so we'll be sharp on that time. So, let me just... Tell me who wants to still raise a question. Vous êtes en tir groupé, alors vous allez passer les questions tous les trois. Rapidement, d'abord monsieur, et ensuite tous les trois, et ensuite on redonne la parole à Matt. Allez-y. Um, so, thank you for being here and the time that you've taken for us. Um, I've been really impressed by the humility that you've showed us. So, my question is, do you believe that pressure, as you mentioned, may be a general solution for countries that are under terrorist occupation? And um, do you think that dialogue can really change the things when it comes to people that are strongly seated in their conviction. Thank you. And uh, the only way that we believe that the military pressure as as, as uh, one uh, one of the ways of the solution is because the Taliban so far, so far have refused any other means. So yes, we strongly believe that we need to add as pressure as much as pressure as possible to bring them to the table to talk. Problem. Thank you very much. Alizy. Uh, thank you again. It's been incredibly insightful. Uh, while My answering pleasure. a previous question, you mentioned that you'd be for sanctions, but what kind of sanctions you'd be looking for? Because like, we've seen like right now with Russia, for example, like we've been trying to do financial sanctions, but it hasn't really slowed down the conflict in the Basque region. So what kind of sanctions are would you be happy to see? Well, uh, uh, I don't think we can compare Afghanistan with Russia, first and foremost, says that they have, Russia is huge and they have huge, huge uh, geography with uh, resources which is almost unlimited. So therefore it is, uh, it's, it's, cannot, it's incomparable. Uh, but when I say sanctions, uh, uh, it's a different means of sanctions from travel bans. Uh, right now, as I'm speaking, for example, Mr. Muttaqis Freely, the uh, foreign minister of the Taliban is going to China. And they have visited Moscow uh, recently. And they are going to Turkey time after time, a NATO member. So, by the way, don't forget, there is a sanction regime in UN Security Council. What's not being imposed? It's not being uh, implemented. So uh, I believe that implementation of sanctions on the Taliban to contain them, to refrain them, and also to 
uh, to minimize their effort and their ability to expand and also to strengthen themselves, it is very much a, a great gesture and it's a way that strengthens the opposition and the uh, democratic forces to be able to, 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 to have a chance to stand. Yeah. Should the United States give back the $9 billion of dollars that the U.S. Treasury has uh, withdrawn? Uh, give it to who? To the Taliban. To the Taliban to, 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 to make more bombs and to, to kill more people? <laughs> Okay. Yep. That's the answer. Uh, so, Allez-y, <laughs> monsieur. We have previously talked about the Chinese considering the, the Taliban government mm -hmm. as kind of legitimate. Uh, and for you, which game is playing China in Afghanistan? Uh, is it economic? And if it is, do you know if an economic agreement has been established between the Taliban so called government and China? Well, unfortunately, once again, as I mentioned before, um, because of the presence of NATO, the China and the other countries, they played uh, um, uh, 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 not a very constructive role in, in, in basically trying to remove the NATO from Afghanistan. And that uh, cost the people of Afghanistan uh, billions of dollars and uh, thousands of lives, by the way. However, uh, uh, recently, the China and their engagement with the Taliban uh, uh, it is very wrong. Uh, unfortunately, uh, China, without taking into consideration that the Taliban do not possess any internal legitimacy, and without them helping Afghanistan to reach that internal legitimacy and a legitimate government, they went straight for the mines of Afghanistan, for the treasures of Afghanistan, and they want to mine it. Which, in my opinion, in the absence of a legitimate government that is called theft. Thank you so much, um, Ahmad. I think we can give him a very big round of applause.